Hello everyone, it's Benny, and in this video, we're going to be talking about a profiling technique called relative profiling. And here's how this works. Right now, we have a program, and it looks something like this. And as you can see, it's outputting some profiling statistics. These statistics may vary for you if you decide to download and try this for yourself, but for me, these are what the profiling statistics are. And this is good. These give a, a very good idea of what part of the program is causing a performance problem. So for instance, right now, I can say rendering, probably causing a performance problem, because sleeping in Windows Sync, there we can't do much about. So rendering is probably the performance problem right now. But it doesn't help us do much else. We've identified the problem somewhere in the rendering system, but there's a lot going on in the rendering system. How do we know what part of the rendering system actually is causing the performance problem. And that's where relative profiling t comes in. The idea is we will disable certain parts of the rendering engine and see how it affects the render time. So right now it's taking roughly 2.5 to 3 milliseconds. So if I disable part of it and it suddenly is taking 1 millisecond, I know, hey, that's caused rendering to be a lot faster, therefore that's probably where the performance issue is. So, with all that out of the way, let's implement relative profiling. If you want to follow along, you can download the source code both before and after we implement relative profiling in the description, and the build instructions are in the readme file. So, how do we implement relative profiling? Well, relative profiling is all about removing certain pieces of code, and seeing how your performance changes because of that. So for instance, in mesh.cpp, at around line 219, we have this one line of code right here where we use GL draw elements. And this is basically the reason the GPU does anything. Every time we want to draw something, it issues this command and the GPU draws it. So what happens if we remove it? Well, the GPU never draws anything. It just sort of sits there. It, it uses video memory, but it doesn't actually do anything. So that might be an interesting thing to relatively profile. This way, if we disable this, we have a pretty good idea of how much time is actually being used by the GPU, and therefore all the remaining time is being used by the CPU. And that's probably useful information for a renderer. So, yeah. So our relative profiling tool needs some way to remove this line of code if we're relatively profiling it. And a good way to do that is with a macro. So in profiling.h, I'm going to define a macro. And I'm going to, I'm going to call it profiling disable mesh draw. Sure. And I'm going to start with that equal to 0. So if it's 0, we're not doing it. If it's 1, we're doing it. So and we'd use a preprocessor if, and if profiling disable mesh drawing is equal to zero, then we don't want to disable this. So therefore, leave it in. And of course, otherwise, we're trying to disable it. And it's really that simple. That's how you relatively profile stuff. You set up macros, and well, you set, set them up appropriately to remove the lines of code you're interested in. Only thing you got to make sure of is you're including profiling.h, wherever you're using that. So make sure you have that. Now, at this point, you can go ahead and play around with this, set this to 1, and then it'll stop drawing. And then you can see what how performance changes and whatnot. But personally, I'm just going to go ahead and implement the remaining macros that I'm interested in. Now, aside from just what part of it's being used by the GPU, Another thing that might be interesting is how much time is spent by the GPU on shading. How much time is spent actually deciding what color a pixel should be and, you know, translating the meshes and doing all that stuff. How much time is basically spent not rasterizing. <laughs> and the way we can do this is just by having sort of a stub shader in our shader.cpp. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to have an std string. I'm going to call it actual file name. And normally, this is going to be equal to file name. 
and that's what I'm actually going to be loading here, rather than, you know, <laughs> rather than my file name, which is what I had before. And I'm going to have an if. I'm going to call it profiling, disable, and it's, I'll say, oh, yeah, disable shading, sure. If this is equal to zero, or I guess I'd say if this is not equal to zero, then we want to disable the shading. And in that case, actual file name is going to be equal to, I'll call it null shader. So there. Oh, and with semicolon. Don't forget the semicolon. And as before, make sure you're including profiling.h, and also make sure you actually define it in profiling.h. So, I'm going to copy this, and put it in profiling.h. And there. So now all we have to do is create sort of a null shader. So I'm going to go to my shaders, I'm going to copy basic shader as my basis for null shader.glsl. And in here, I'm basically going to remove all computation. My GL position is just going to be set to my position. No matrices, uniforms, text cords, anything. Just going to take in the position, set my output position to the position. It's that simple. And similarly, in my fragment shader, no reading from textures, anything like that. Just going to take my frag output, set it to a vec4 of... Sure, I'll set it to vec4 of 1. So there. It's just, well, 1. It's all white. And there. So, now we have null shader. And this one I actually am going to test, because I want to make sure the shader actually builds. And, ah. I, for some reason, I deleted the semicolon there. So now if I add that back in, everything should build and be fine. So there, we're not shading anything, so we're not generating any proper colors. And, as you see, our render time has dropped dramatically because of that. So, yeah, that's a pretty good indication that shading has at least something to do with our performance, but I'm not going to count on my profiling statistics here because I'm recording and, well... My recorder's consuming some resources and whatnot, but yeah. So, another one we might be interested in. Eh. Another pro relative profiling statistic we might be interested in is setting our viewport to one by one. So profiling set one by one viewport. And the reason this is going to be interesting is because if we set our viewport to one by one, then basically the cost of generating the pixel goes down to zero. So that just leaves the amount of time spent processing geometry and rasterizing it. And that... Well, actually, that would even decrease rasterizing to almost zero. So really the cost there is just processing geometry. And that's going to be... Well, that'll tell you how much time spent processing geometry. In general. Of course there's some noise, but... Yeah. So... The two places we need that are window.cpp in our bind as render target, if our set viewport is equal to zero, then we're going to set the viewport as normal. Then preprocessor else, we're going to set the viewport to, well, start at zero, and end at one, and one. And it's that simple. And we also have to do something similar in texture.cpv, so I'm going to copy this, and I'm going to go to Texture bind is render target. Because remember, if we're rendering to not the window, that's still a potential render target. So, yeah. I'm just going to replace this line with what I had in textures. So, there. And as before, in both cases, make sure profile.h is included in texture.cpp and window.cpp, because otherwise the macros are meaningless. And finally, there's one more I want to define. And this is going to be set 2x2 two two texture. And the reason this might be interesting is, well, using really massive textures, generally pretty expensive. This will tell Yeah. This will be a good indication of how much how much of our performance is being lost to just using well, textures. So if profile set 2x2 two two texture is equal to zero, then M under texture to texture data, 
I'm going to set my width and height as normal. Then preprocess or else, otherwise, I'm of course going to set my width and height to 2 by 2. And there. So now I should be able to build, and again, make sure profiling foundation is included. And there. So, once it builds, I'm not using anything right now, but now we have macros for disabling various parts of the engine and doing some relative profiling. And I think you get the idea of how it works by now, but these, in general, are some pretty good relative profiling macros for just about any rendering engine. These things cost a fair bit just almost regardless of what you're doing. So there. So I'm going to do some basic profiling off-screen and I'll tell you what I've come up with. Okay, so I went ahead and profiled the engine with our new tools off-screen because that way my screen recorder isn't screwing up the results. Now, something you have to be mindful of when you're doing this. Render time isn't just the time it takes to render. Some of the render time is taken up in the window sync time, because that's when the GPU is really finishing up the commands. However, some of the window sync time is also time where the application is just sleeping and doing other things. So, it can be a little bit tricky to properly interpret the results. But, here's what I did, and here's what I'm pretty sure is the issue. Now, when I disabled mesh drawing, it took a little coaxing, but I figured out eventually that the GPU is taking at least on my machine, roughly about 8 milliseconds of the total time. So it's definitely an issue on the GPU. Now, when I disabled shading, then, yeah, that helps. It helps a lot, in fact. But, when I disable shading, and I set the viewport to 1 by 1, meaning most of the fragment operations are gone, cost is about the same. And when I leave the viewport at one by one, it really doesn't change anything, even if, if I leave shading enabled. So it, I think it's fair to say that our big issue, it's definitely a GPU issue, and it's not a fragment shading issue. Just shading polygons, at least right now, is okay. We're not spending a lot of time shading polygons. Our big cost is just the geometry. We're processing too much geometry too much of the time. And it makes sense in this case. We're not doing anything overly complicated with shading. We have shadows on two, two different lights, and we're using a forward renderer, which re-renders the entire scene for every single rendering pass. So, yeah, our problem is definitely just not intelligently rendering everything, not rendering only the things we need to. So, in the next video, we're going to be talking about an optimization that can deal with that. It can reduce our rendering to not re-rendering the whole scene every time we need to draw something, but only rendering the parts of the scene that are at least plausibly relevant. And that technique is thrust and culling. So, thank you, hope you enjoyed, hope you learned, and I'll see you next time, where we'll be talking about thrust and culling, how to implement it, when you should need it, when you don't need it, and all that stuff. Thank you. See you then.